Hello everyone. Welcome to BioScholar. Today, we're going to discuss the fascinating process of endocytosis, the way cells take in substances from the extracellular space. But how exactly does this process happen? That's what we'll explore in detail in this video. The material transported into the cell can be solid or liquid, and based on this, endocytosis is divided into two main types. Phagocytosis, when the cell engulfs solid particles. Pinocytosis, when the cell takes in fluids. We'll also talk about a specialized form of endocytosis called receptor-mediated endocytosis, which is highly specific and efficient. And finally, I'll explain the opposite process of endocytosis, called exocytosis, where substances are sent out of the cell. So stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe to BioScholar and hit the bell icon for more engaging and easy to understand biology videos. So let's go. So, what is endocytosis? The prefix endo, comes from Greek and means within or inside, while the suffix cytosis, refers to a cellular process or activity. So, endocytosis basically means the process by which a living cell takes in matter from its surroundings by invaginating its membrane to form a vesicle. So, as I mentioned earlier, endocytosis is the process of taking substances from the extracellular space into the cell. Cells need to take in these substances to fulfill various functions, and this transport happens across the cell membrane. Now, you might remember that materials are constantly passing through the membrane, either directly or through membrane proteins. So what's the point of this whole complex invagination process? Let's find out. Small molecules like water can easily pass through the membrane. Larger molecules, like some nutrients or signaling compounds, can also pass through using membrane proteins or channels. But sometimes, the molecules are too large to pass through any channel or protein. In such case, cell use this process what we call endocytosis to bring these molecules in. This process is used when large quantities of material need to be transported, that's why it's also called bulk transport across the cell membrane. So, the main purpose of the endocytosis is the transport material inside the cell membrane in bulk. However, it's not a simple or passive process. It's actually a highly specialized and regulated mechanism. So, let's break it down and understand how exactly this process happens. Endocytosis happens in five key steps. Let's discuss them in detail. The first step is binding of the molecule to the plasma membrane. Imagine this is a cell getting ready to take in a large particle. It could be a food particle, a protein, or even a bacterium. We call such particles ligands. These are the substances the cell wants to take in. Now, on the outer surface of the cell membrane, there are special receptor proteins that recognize and bind to these ligands. These receptor proteins are highly specific, like a lock and key system. So, in the first step, ligands from the extracellular space bind to the receptor proteins on the cell surface, marking the beginning of the endocytosis process. Once the ligand binds to the receptor proteins on the cell surface, it triggers a signal inside the cell, a kind of molecular, green light, that tells the cell it's time to bring the material in. This signal activates certain proteins beneath the membrane, like clathrin in receptor-mediated endocytosis, or rearranges the actin cytoskeleton in phagocytosis. These internal changes guide the plasma membrane to start bending inward. This bending inward is called invagination. The membrane begins to fold around the particle, forming a pit-like depression or pseudopod-like extensions, depending on the type of endocytosis. It's like the cell is reaching out with invisible arms or forming a pocket to surround and trap the material, preparing to pull it inside. Once the plasma membrane has deeply invaginated and surrounded the ligand or particle, the next step is to completely pinch off this part of the membrane from the surface. This results in the formation of a vesicle, a small, enclosed membrane-bound sac inside the cytoplasm. In receptor-mediated endocytosis, proteins like clathrin help shape and close the vesicle, while in other types like phagocytosis, the cytoskeleton helps complete the enclosure. At this point, the material from outside the cell is now fully enclosed within a vesicle inside the cell, protected by a lipid membrane, and officially inside the cytoplasm, ready for the next step. Once the vesicle is formed, it moves deeper into the cytoplasm. But the cell doesn't just let it float around, it has a proper transport and sorting system inside. This vesicle now fuses with an organelle called the early endosome, which acts like a sorting center. Here, the contents of the vesicle are checked and directed to where they need to go. If the material is harmful or no longer needed, the vesicle may be sent to a lysosome, where powerful enzymes break it down into simpler molecules the cell can reuse. 
If the contents are useful, like nutrients or signaling molecules, they can be sent to the Golgi apparatus or other parts of the cell for further processing. So, in this step, the cell decides whether to digest, store, or use the material, like a smart system managing incoming deliveries. After sorting, the cell puts the incoming material to real use. If it's something beneficial, like nutrients, enzymes, or signaling molecules, the cell integrates it into its metabolic processes, repairs, or communication systems. This supports the cell's growth, defense, or coordination with other cells. Additionally, the cell doesn't waste resources. Receptor proteins used during the initial binding process are often sent back to the cell membrane to be reused for future endocytosis, making the process energy efficient. So, in this final step, the focus is on making use of what's valuable and recycling what's reusable, a perfect balance of resourcefulness and precision inside the cell. So now that we've seen how endocytosis works step by step, you might be wondering. Does every cell use the same method to bring things in? Actually, no, depending on what the cell is taking in, whether it's solid particles, fluids, or specific molecules, the process takes different forms. Let's break down the three main types of endocytosis, and see how each one is uniquely designed to handle different kinds of cargo. Phagocytosis is like the cell's way of eating solid particles, and it's especially important for cells that protect our body, like white blood cells. Imagine a large, dangerous intruder like a bacteria or dead cell fragment floating outside. The cell detects it, and responds like a warrior. It sends out extensions of its membrane called pseudopods. Once the particle is fully wrapped, the cell engulfs it into a large vesicle called a phagosome. The story doesn't end there. This phagosome then fuses with a lysosome, which is packed with powerful digestive enzymes. Together, they break down the harmful material and either destroy it completely or recycle what's useful. Phagocytosis is mostly carried out by specialized cells like macrophages and neutrophils, and it plays a vital role in immune defense. Pinocytosis is more like the cell taking little sips of its surrounding fluid, hence the nickname, cell drinking. In this process, the cell doesn't wait for specific targets like in phagocytosis. Instead, it just folds inward a small part of its membrane, forming a tiny pocket. This pocket traps droplets of extracellular fluid, which may contain dissolved nutrients, ions, or small molecules. The pocket then pinches off inside the cell, forming a small vesicle filled with that fluid. Now the cell can absorb whatever useful substances were dissolved in it. Pinocytosis is a non-specific process, the cell doesn't choose what it's drinking. It just absorbs a sample of what's around, like tasting the soup to see what's in it. It's commonly seen in many cell types, especially those that are actively absorbing nutrients, like cells lining your intestines or blood vessels. This is the most selective form of endocytosis. Instead of randomly taking things in, the cell specifically targets and absorbs only certain molecules, like cholesterol, hormones, or vitamins. Here's how it works. The cell membrane has special receptor proteins that are shaped to fit only specific molecules, like a lock and key. When the right molecule, called a ligand, binds to its receptor, it triggers the membrane to fold in, forming a vesicle. Once inside, the material is sorted just like in general endocytosis, useful parts are used, and the rest is broken down. This process is highly efficient, used when the cell needs something very specific and doesn't want to waste energy on random sampling. Now, once the cell has used the desired materials, it also needs to remove waste products, and for that, it uses the exact opposite process of endocytosis, called exocytosis. Exo, means out, and that's exactly what happens. But wait, it's not just for waste. Cells also use exocytosis to export essential materials, like proteins, hormones, and neurotransmitters. The material to be exported is packed into vesicles, which then fuse with the cell membrane and release their contents outside the cell. And if you want to dive deeper into this amazing process, how it works, its types, and real-life examples, then click on this video right here. I've explained it all in a simple and visual way that I know you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching BioScholar, I'll see you there.